Good morning. morning. Welcome to Lamb of God. Welcome to the third Sunday in Advent. It's great to have you all here. First things first, Ron, you done good. The Lions. Yeah, won mightily last night. Any of you get to see it? Any of you had the NFL Network? You're going to watch it. That was a great game. It was a lot of fun. So, Ron, you done good. Yeah. Well, that's all we have to talk about, so. (laughs) Welcome, everybody. So glad that you can be here and join us, especially you at home that are worshiping on live stream. Welcome. We're glad that you're joining with us. The Holy Spirit that lifts us up here, may he lift you up also in your worship this day. Last Sunday, wasn't the Christmas program awesome? Yes. Very good. Out of the five years I've been here, that ranks among probably one of the best, I think. I want to thank everyone that was involved, children that were involved, the parents who brought them, all of you that attended, the musicians, and then also afterward, the brunch was awesome. It was great. Food was great. It was great fellowship, great attendance. All of you that helped with that, that cooked, brought food, cleaned up, God bless you and thank you very much for doing that. Coming up this week, uh, we had 9 a.m. Bible study longer look at the lessons this Sunday morning. I'm also going to do it on Christmas Eve, 9 o'clock next Sunday. And then we'll take a break uh, the next couple Sundays after that. So one more longer look at the lessons, uh, Christmas Eve morning at 9, and then we'll take a break. Coming up this week, we have our 1 p.m. women's Bible study on Hebrews. We'll have one more installment of that, and then we'll take a break for the uh, Christmas season And then, uh, of course, our Wednesday Bible studies are on hiatus until the new year. Coming up also this week, Monday evening, we have game night, Tuesday morning, quilters and trustees. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, Linda, choir practice? Okay. And then Wednesday, we have the out to lunch bunch at Little Joe's in Grand Blanc. You're invited to join us for that. Also coming up on Wednesday at 5 o'clock, Go to lunch with the Out to Lunch Bunch. Come back here at 5 and you can have dinner with us uh, for the midweek Advent dinners. We're going to have beef stew. And then, of course, 7 o'clock we will worship. We're continuing on with the uh, Advent series, uh, Advent Viewed Through the Eyes of the Old Testament. Uh, The sermon name is I Am Has Come to Save. And that will be drawn from Exodus chapter 3. Continuing on until uh, and through Christmas Eve, Our uh, Ladies of the Lamb, the LWML, have challenged the congregation to put in a donation, and that money will go to the Franklin Avenue Missions Food Bank. And LWML has promised to match up to $200. I don't know where we're at with that now, but if you haven't done so, I would invite you to take uh, an opportunity and contribute to that. Next Sunday evening, or next Sunday, Christmas Eve, two services planned. Our usual 10 o'clock service, always like to have worship at 10 o'clock on a Sunday, no matter when it is. That will be our festival worship, and uh, the choir is going to sing Scarborough Carol on that day for us. Also at 7 o'clock, we have our candlelight service, where at the end of the service we'll light candles, and interspersed with Silent Night, we will read through Luke's birth story of Jesus. And the choir will also be singing at that, uh, Dana Nobis Passeum which is Latin for grant us peace. What is it? Dona? Dona? What she said. (laughs) I know a little bit of Greek, but I never studied Latin. Thank you, young lady. Anyway, it means grant us peace, and that will be be their choir piece uh, at 7 o'clock. Check out the memory tree in the fellowship hall. It's up. It's in the back corner over there. We have heart-shaped ornaments that are right beside it. It's an opportunity for you to write the name of a loved one who has passed away and hang it on the tree in memory and in thanksgiving to God for the gift that was their life. And also remembering that it's just goodbye for now. Through faith in Christ, we gather together with them in eternal life. Check out our news and notes for other happenings that are coming up or things that have happened uh, in the past week. A couple things we're going to uh, add to our prayers. We're going to pray for Dale Norrington, who's in the hospital. He's having problems with his spleen. Uh, They were looking at whether they're going to remove it or not. I never did hear uh, if that happened, but we'll lift him up in prayer. Also, we're going to lift up in prayer our brothers and sisters in Christ at Faith Grand Blank. 
Their lead pastor, Pastor Todd Beerman, is taking a call to go work for the district. And he will have an office in St. Louis while he's working for the district. So he will be leaving, and they are going to have to make plans on what they're going to do uh, in his absence. So we'll lift them up in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to guide them as he knows best. With that, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment and share that peace with one another with a wave of the hand, left and to the right. Also a wave to those that are worshiping at home. Let us now continue our worship. We're going to sing through the, probably the number one Advent song, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It's going to be interspersed throughout our service. Let's sing the first two verses. I would invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said... I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. We pause for a moment of silent reflection on God's word and what it shows, the sin it shows existing in our hearts and our minds. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we responsively read the introit. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to God. 
Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. Righteousness will go before him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson this morning comes from Isaiah 61. The first verse of this reading was spoken by the mouth of Jesus when he visited the synagogue in Nazareth. It's prophetic words on what Christ came to do as a light of faith in your life and in mine. Isaiah writes, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant those who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful headdress instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the garment of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their offspring shall be known among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are an offspring that the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. 
For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For the earth brings forth its sprouts as a garden causes what is sown to sprout up in it. So the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all nations. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul giving a conclusion to this letter to the Thessalonian church. Short bullet points meant for them and for us, describing how we live in the light of faith as his church. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you now to stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. And this is the testimony of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now, they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Then why are you baptizing, if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Together let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. And if there are any children that would like to join me up front, younger or older, come on up. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? What is this? An arrow. Huh? Piece of paper, but it's got an arrow on it, right? When, when would an arrow come in handy? Give me some, for instances. Hmm? Driving, what did you say? The, what's the road? Oh, the road, okay, yep. To show you, well, which way to go, but also one way, direction. Traffic's going this way, don't try to go the other way, yeah. What about when you're out in the mall shopping and you're looking for the bathroom? Very important then. You look for the big sign, but don't they generally have an arrow? I think they do, at least what I've seen they do. <laughs> How about when you're looking for, what, what, what do you guys want for Christmas? What's the number one thing you want? Tangible, physical things. Very good children's message answer. Peace on earth, gotcha iPhone, some kind of electronic thing, a book, wouldn't this work? Books, electronic things, this way? What about if you were at like one of those game shows, okay? And they were gonna give one of those things away if you could be a contestant. And there's all these people out there going, pick me, pick me, pick me. And then mom and dad are behind you and they hold this over your head. That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Pick her. Pick him. Arrows are good. Arrows are good in a lot of instances. John the Baptist, what he's doing in our gospel lesson, he's acting like an arrow, and he's pointing to somebody. Who's he pointing to? Jesus, yeah. Now, we know who Jesus is, right? John knew who Jesus was. But these guys that were in our gospel lesson came to talk to John, they didn't know who Jesus was. Even though Jesus might have been right there on the shore, they didn't know who he was because they lacked the one thing that he could understand, and that's faith. And so John was an arrow pointing. He was basically saying, I know that's the Messiah. I saw at his baptism, heaven's open. I heard the voice of God saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. I saw the Holy Spirit descend. I know that's him. In fact, not in this scripture, but one of the other gospels we have recorded as Jesus is walking by, John is basically pointing, saying, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John needed that pointed out to him in Jesus' baptism. Before that, he didn't know who he was. We need that too. So one of the reasons I'm here is I'm like an arrow. I try to point you to Jesus as the answer for many of the problems that you and I have because many of them come with the fact that we don't really know who God is unless we know Jesus. We know Jesus. We know God is a God of light and love for you and for me and for all people. So you, one of the reasons he's brought you to faith and brings you here and has me reminding of you who Jesus is is so when you leave, you can be an arrow pointing to Jesus. Now what might be a good way to do that? I was thinking about that. I thought maybe I could give you a little help. So we've got this. Anybody tell me what this means? We got a Christmas tree, right, which represents what? Christmas. And an arrow pointing to what? The manger. Yeah. There's a manger, but what is the shadow on the manger? 
Christmas is about the baby who came to die and rise again for our sins. Isn't that what the cross means? Christmas is about the baby who came for our salvation, now and unto eternal life. So, I'm going to give you this. My challenge to you, I'll give you two. Share it with somebody here in the sanctuary, and then keep one and share it with somebody outside the sanctuary, like wherever you go today, if you're going out to eat lunch, or if you're going to a friend's house, or even when you go to school. Can you pass two down to that gentleman there? Sure. And maybe they might even ask, not with me. Good thing. I appreciate that. I really do. That's a loving act. Anyone you share that with, you're really giving them a gift of love. You are. But share it. And of course, they might ask you, what does this mean? And that's your opportunity to say, Christmas is about the baby who came to die and rise again to forgive us. Let's pray. You can repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Jesus, help us us to keep this faith faith about why you came came on Christmas Day. Day. May that faith faith live in our hearts hearts. and may we share it it with those around us. In your name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ladies, very much. You can head back to your seats if anyone wants to go with Miss Chrissy. Oh, Miss Chrissy, do you want to go or no? Okay. And we'll continue on with our sermon hymn. Please stand as you are able. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Sermon for today comes from our gospel reading. I'm going to actually go a couple verses before where the reading started. And just that first section of the gospel, I've entitled it, The Light Darkness Cannot Overcome. So I'm going to read the first part of that gospel and include those two verses that were not included as part of our earlier reading. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light 
that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. What's your picture in your mind's eye when you think of the perfect Christmas? Does it involve something like this? Oh, let me get it back. There we go. Got to have that fire burning. Isn't this kind of the perfect Christmas scene? Fire in the fireplace. Can you hear the crackling of the logs in your mind's eye? Feel the warmth radiating from the fireplace. And of course the beautiful tree there and presents underneath it and all the decorations kind of generally brings a joy to your heart, doesn't it? And a happiness. Yeah. Of course, there's things in our life that serve to quench that and block that out. To make it kind of disappear. Things in each of our lives. Darkness. Darkness that comes from all of the problems that we have living in a fallen world. Problems with names such as health issues, missing loved ones who are no longer with us, financial issues, troubles and disagreements we have with one another and especially with those loved ones, especially those we might be gathering with on Christmas Day. All of those can serve to wash away, to darken that joy that we know we're supposed to have at Christmas. John. John was somebody who came to point to that darkness. Now when you think about it, there's kind of an incongruity there, isn't there? I mean, why do you need somebody to point to darkness? If it's dark out and a light comes, don't you see it? Think about when you're in your house, maybe hopefully it doesn't happen to you this winter, and you lose power. All the lights go out. One of my first reactions is go over and try the light switch. Of course, that's not going to do anything. So you're there, and if it's nighttime, and you haven't lit a candle, it can be really dark and really uncomfortable in your house. And then the power comes back on. Boom! Boom! Do you need anybody to tell you, hey, the power just came back on? No, you know, you can see it. Unless a person with you was blind. Then you might have to explain to them why the rest of the room was going, yay! You have to tell them the power came back on. You have to tell them that there's light now. Hence the purpose of John, and the purpose why you are here today. That darkness in our lives can cover over our vision of the light. And we need people to point to it and draw our attention to it. That's what John the Baptist did. To point to the light that was Christ. Because even though he might have been standing there on the banks of the Jordan, we have these gentlemen that came from Jerusalem sent by the Pharisees trying to find out what John was doing. And they're not interested in a questioning kind of way. They want to find out if he's doing heretical things, and if not, they're going to report back, and they're going to make him stop it. John was trying to show them, I'm here commissioned by God to do his work, to point to somebody that you don't know, but you need to realize and you need to believe in. Who was that? It was Jesus. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. We know Jesus was a man, born in Nazareth, or from Nazareth, born in Bethlehem, but he was more than that. John, in the beginning of his gospel, introduces him as the Word. The Word that was with God from eternity past, and the Word that was God. 
and is God. The one that was there at the beginning of creation, from him life came. He was the source of life for Adam and Eve. A life that was full of light. Light that was the knowledge of who God really is. Pure. Sinless. Could have a perfect relationship with this creator God. Nothing stood in the way. There was no sin, there was no darkness, there was no hate. A life of perfect love for God and one another that was to last for eternity. That's the gift that Christ got brought. That's the gift that was to be yours and mine, now and forever. Unfortunately, the fall ended that. The fall brought darkness. The fall brought sin. The fall cut off our relationship and our ability to really know who this God is and what he has for us. We lost it. A source of the darkness we have in our life is that very fact that life is not what was intended to be. Christ came to restore that. He is the true light which gives light to everyone and he was coming into the world. He himself, the author and creator of life, came and took on human form so that we might know what this gift of life was supposed to be in our lives, what it was supposed to be like. And he lived out a life showing that to us. A life that was full of love for God first, God the Father, and for other people. A love that cared about other people, that put them before his own needs. So much so, he came to give that very life that was his on the cross to die for our sins. The best place to see the love of Christ, the love of God, and what he should mean for you and I is our Savior, innocent, yet suffering in our place, dying for the darkness that invades our hearts and minds, taking it away on the cross, washing it away forever, taking that darkness from us and then giving to us his light his love, his perfection, giving it to us as his gift, something we could never earn or deserve, restoring that life and that light to our hearts and our minds, even in the midst of living in a darkened world with all of its problems that invade us. So there was a man sent by God whose name was John. His job was to point to that gift that is Christ. That work that he came to do. His death and his resurrection. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is him. Why? He testified about the light so that those people, even those people that came from Jerusalem, those Pharisees, some of which would put him on the cross and kill him so they might know who he really is. If not before his death, after his resurrection, so they would come to faith. John the Baptist isn't here anymore, but we have his witness. We have his witness in Scripture. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And not just his witness, we have the witness of our Lord and Savior in Scripture. He is the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Doesn't matter how deep and dark that darkness is, Christ took it away and defeated it on the cross. And that reminder comes to us in Scripture. Comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who several chapters later would testify before Nicodemus, but also before us, God so loved the world God so loved you that he gave his one and only son, the most precious gift, so that whoever believes in him should not perish in darkness, should not live a life now that's separated from God and for eternity, but live 
Live in relationship to God now. Personal, intimate relationship with your Lord now through the Holy Spirit that continues on throughout your life to eternal life to come. So that you would not perish in darkness, but you should have eternal life. This was revealed to John when he saw Jesus baptized. It's revealed to you in your baptism. In your baptism, what happened to Jesus also happened to you. You didn't see it, but that's the scriptural reality. When you came to the font and the water was poured over your head, the heavens were open. And God declared, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter. As the water splashed over your head three times, I'm claiming you as my own. You are now mine. And I'm bringing to you all that Christ earned for you on the cross for all men. I'm bringing it to you so that the darkness is washed from your life forever. I'm replacing it with everything that Christ won for you on the cross. His perfect life. His life of love and service to the Father is now credited to you. His gift. I need that reminder. And you need that reminder. Especially in the days when darkness is prevailing. Scripture brings us the promise of God and the work of God. Isaiah, long before Christ was ever born, gave us the summary of what he would come to do. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and anointed him, as it has you in your baptism. Why? To bring good news, the gospel message, to all those who have broken hearts over their sin and over the darkness that overwhelms them, to repair that broken heart through the gospel, through the love of Christ, through his gift of his death and resurrection, to bind up all that's broken in our lives and to proclaim liberty to us, us that sometimes we feel like that darkness and that sadness and all of these problems have bound us and we just can't escape from them. And you know what the truth is? On our own, we can't. But he releases us. He frees us. That's his gift of faith into our lives, proclaiming to you, you are freed from that life. Even if you feel like you're still bound and captive, know the actual truth is you are free. I've forgiven all your debts. Turn those over to my Father in heaven in prayer and know that they are taken away. And keep doing that, not just once, but over and over and over again. Whenever those worries for the fallen, broken world come upon you, whenever you are just so overwhelmingly missing a loved one, when those financial problems raise and stare you in the face, when those problems we have with one another are there and we don't know how we're going to solve them, you know who does know? Our Lord does. And his spirit is working in your life. Bringing to you through the word and through the sacrament his comfort, his grace, his gifts. His presence. His presence to walk with you through this life. He can certainly take those problems away. But my experience is often he doesn't. He allows us to live through them because he wants us to know he's walking with us. Holding our hand. Walking through that valley of dark shadows. Whatever it may be. You're never alone. He's always with you. His promise. Jesus, behold, I will never leave you or forsake you. I'm always with you. Even in those darkest hours. He's a prayer away. He's a scripture passage away. He promises to come and unbind your heart from that darkness and shine the light and love that is faith back into your heart through his word and through the ongoing work of the sacrament. That's why John came, to be one who pointed to this answer for our darkness. That's why he's brought faith into your heart 
so that you can be somebody that points to that answer for the darkness in other people's lives. I'm sure you know somebody that's going through some kind of darkness, some kind of sorrow, some kind of worry. We all know somebody. And as those who have been lifted by that light of faith, Christ wants you to come alongside them and figuratively, maybe even literally, wrap your, wrap your arms around them and just be his presence with them. Listen to them. Let them unburden that darkness and that worry and that sorrow to you. Join them in prayer. Pray that the Lord would come alongside with his spirit now and going forward and help them. And then bring God's word to them. A scripture passage that comes to mind from the Bible that should be laying in front of you. Direct them to come with you to the place where he is present in word and sacrament here. Invite them to come. Where it's not just them and Jesus alone, but it's us. Us who gather. We all put on our church faces, don't we? I do. How you doing, pastor? Everything's fine. You know what? Everything is not fine. But in Christ, those things that aren't fine, I can trust they're taken care of, and I can give them over to him. There's comfort as we gather to know you're not alone with what you suffer. We all suffer from darkness, but we all who have faith have Christ walking with us. And those of you that may be going through those times, don't isolate yourself. Reach out. Some of the times when I never wanted to come to worship, when I was in seminary days that I was having problems, you know where I needed to be? I needed to be in worship. I needed to be surrounded with brothers and sisters in Christ to hear the word and receive the sacrament. My encouragement to you, when you're feeling the most like, I, don't, I just can't worship God today, come. His spirit will lift you up. Come and join us, surrounded by the love of Christ that we all share as the fellowship of believers. Reach out to your brothers and sisters. Reach out to me. Allow us to be Christ for you. Sometimes all it takes is just the presence of a loved one to sit with you and pray with you. That's why Christ brought us to faith and gathers us here, so we can be that in the lives of others, just as Christ is doing that through others and through me, through this message, I pray, in your life as well. It's a wonderful gift, isn't it? If you can enjoy this kind of a scene on Christmas Eve, that's a wonderful thing. I pray you can. If you don't have a fireplace, this is off YouTube. If you have a TV that's hooked to the internet, you could actually download this and play it. You could. I realize, though, that even with a beautiful scene like this, that darkness comes crawling back into your life. It has me. Just know you're not alone. Jesus is there with you. He came to dispel that darkness so you could see something even more beautiful than this. So you could see him and his love that radiates from the cross, his gift of salvation, forgiveness of sins, and eternal life that is for you now and continues through your life until eternal life to come. He came as a baby. He ascended to heaven but he continues to come through word and sacrament into your life, never to leave you, but to walk with you through all that life has to offer, knowing what's happened to you in the past, what's going on with you now, and what will happen in the future, so that you walk with him all the way to eternal life. He is the light that whatever darkness you're experiencing cannot dispel. May that light be your light of faith now and going forward. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding may it keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As we consider our call to give an offering, know that we don't pass the offering plate here. If you're a visitor, we just want you to know we're so glad you've come to join us. You're so glad to bask in the light that is faith that we share in word and sacrament here.
Those who would like to give an offering, there's a box in the narthex that you can drop an offering in on the way out the door. It can be mailed in. You can bring it in during the week or use our online giving portal. Our offering verse for today comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of Christ Jesus for you. We now enjoy our offertory as brought to us by the Hallelujah Ringers. Thank you very much, hallelujah ringers. God bless you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the church, preparing to celebrate the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, that remembering John, the forerunner's preaching of baptism of repentance, for the forgiveness of sins, we too may die to sin and rise to a new life. Let us pray to the Lord. For the church, that the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world would richly and daily forgive our sins and the sins of all believers. And for Matthew, our synodical president, for David, our district president, for Matt, our circuit visitor, and all pastors in Christ, that they would remain faithful to not deny but confess him. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for the church, for the children of our families, that every darkness would be lightened by Christ's gracious visitation, and that God would preserve them from dangers to the body and soul, and guide them in his word to wise paths, keeping them firm in the faith until life's end. Let us pray to the Lord. For all in authority, that they would be given wisdom and insight until the day when Christ comes again in glory to usher in his kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. For those afflicted with pain, sickness, trials, and difficulties, especially those on our prayer list, as well as these for whom special prayers have been requested. For Lois, the sister of Karen Ash, whose son is hospitalized with issues with his pancreas. For him, for Matthew, that the doctors would receive wisdom and that he would have relief from his pain, let us pray to the Lord. For our sister congregation of Faith Grand Blank, as Pastor Behrman takes a call to the district, for guidance to the church leaders and for direction for them, let us pray to the Lord. For Dale Norrington, who's hospitalized with problems of the spleen, for healing and comfort, for him and for his family, let us pray to the Lord. For Bonnie Walter, who fell and broke her hip, that she would receive healing and comfort, and for her family as they worry, let us pray to the Lord. For Jackie Carter, who will be undergoing a procedure to repair a paralyzed vocal cord, that that procedure would go without any complications and she would have a quick recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For Jill's neighbor, Bob Hatfield, who's recovering from pneumonia, that that recovery would be quick and complete and he would give all glory to our Lord and Savior, let us pray to the Lord. For Larry Schubring, who is at home as he continues to recover from surgery, that he, would be, that he would receive comfort and strength and full recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For the family of Gene Ford, who passed away this week, that they would be comforted by the promise of the resurrection and the presence of Christ now in their life, let us pray to the Lord. For Debbie Rush, who's still having issues with an upper respiratory virus, that she would receive healing and complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For our brother, Tim Hill, who is on the way to ER for an ongoing problem and illness, that the doctors would be able to diagnose what is wrong with him and put him on the road to complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For Ron Glenn in the hospital with heart issues, that those would be resolved through medicine, through the doctor, and through the power of the Lord, and that he would have a complete recovery, let us pray to the Lord. For Allison and River Wells, who are suffering from RSV and a sinus infection, that those, these problems would be lifted, that their current condition would improve, and they would give all glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Glory. For all these, that they may be granted health and the certainty that our bodies will be incorruptible and immortal when Christ returns to make all things new. Let us pray to the Lord. For those celebrating birthdays this week, including Candace Anthony, Jane Wilson, and Barb Rodabaugh, that as they have been given life now, they be kept in steadfast faith unto eternal life to come. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those celebrating anniversaries this week, including Carl and Jane Hilliker and Steve and Vicki Fakalak, that Jesus' love would continue to fill their hearts and draw them ever closer to one another and to their Lord and Savior, let us pray to the Lord. Lord O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he stands for us in our, as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
I would invite you now to stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and at all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared, proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
May this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. I invite you to rise as we give thanks and pray. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. O oh God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and our minds by your Holy Spirit that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with bless we the Lord. Be to the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. The love and peace of Christ Jesus, your Savior, has been poured out upon you richly and abundantly this day. In the same manner it has been shared with you, pour out these gifts upon those around you. To all who need to hear the gospel from your lips and by the works of your hands. In doing so, we serve the world as his church. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Friends in the hospital? Let's pray for your friend. <laughs> 